Alrighty guys, if you saw my first ride and impression of the Triumph Street Scrambler, you know that I really dig this motorcycle. I think it makes a lot of sense for the street rider, it's a lot of fun to ride, and it's a great motorcycle to own and enjoy. However, I do own a Scrambler myself. This is my Ducati Scrambler Desert Sled Edition. And I've seen a lot of comments after I put out that video saying, ooh, do you like the Triumph more than your own sled? Are you gonna sell the sled and get a Triumph? Well, today, we're gonna be comparing these two motorcycles and answering the question, which one do I prefer more? Stick around. So this Triumph right over here is one of our giveaway motorcycles. If you hit the link down below to yamanube.co, you can find out how to get entered to win this Street Scrambler for free along with a bunch of other motorcycles. You'll also get access to our community Discord server, which is, in my opinion, the best place for beginner and aspiring riders to learn and understand more about motorcycles. Now, when it comes to scramblers, they're kind of hard to review and ride in my opinion because when it comes to motorcycles nowadays, they're all very specialized for what they're supposed to do. Sport bikes go fast on track, dirt bikes go well off-road. These bikes are kind of in the middle of everything and that's why I really like them personally. They're stylish, comfortable, and they can do a lot of cool stuff. So someone might straddle upon this Triumph and say, oh, it's not as fast as a sport bike. And someone might go on that desert sled and say, it can't tackle single track like my 250, but that's not really what they're all about. But there's a bit of an elephant in the room. Those of you who are very familiar with Scrambler lineups might say, well, Yami, Triumph will sell you the Triumph XC and the XE. That seems like a more natural competitor to the Desert Sled. But in my opinion, because those motorcycles have 400 more cc's, they're a lot more expensive, and they're a lot more technologically advanced than these two motorcycles, I think these two bikes actually compete a lot closer than you might think. With that in mind, let's take a look at the specs. All right guys, so talking through the Triumph Street Scrambler here. So first of all, this is an $11,000 motorcycle, so a very similar price point on the Ducati, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Features a 900cc parallel twin liquid-cooled engine with a 270 degree crank. This has been a staple for the Bonneville line, and it's a very modern and nice engine. I do like it quite a bit. It's got a velvety amount of power and torque. Features 65 horsepower, and 59 foot-pounds of torque. Now this motorcycle is about 500-ish pounds wet and ready to ride. Triumph only claims dry weight, so we have to do a little bit of wizardry to get to that final number there. It features 41 millimeter non-adjustable forks up at the front with a cartridge style that's been revised for 2020. And at the rear, we can see that it has this dual shock setup. It also features this nice set of high pipes on it. Features a five speed gearbox with fifth being a big overdrive gear. So it's not too dissimilar from a six speed gearbox like you'd see on a normal motorcycle. Now one big thing I wanna point out to you is the ground clearance on this machine being that it is a scrambler. It's designed to tackle some off road and it does have a disappointing five and a half inch ground clearance here with a plastic skid plate. That leads you to believe the Triumph doesn't really intend for you to tackle any gnarly rocks with this thing. However, it does feature a 19 inch front end with wire wheels and a 17 inch rear end right over there. The seat height on this machine is about 31.1 inches, so very appropriate and amenable for new riders and anyone with a shorter inseam. It's a very easy motorcycle to straddle upon, and the ergonomics package is pretty reasonable, as I show you guys right here in this clip. This bike features a very classic setup here at the front with this big sweeping analog speedometer. Features three independent rider modes, off-road mode, wet mode, and street mode. Off-road mode is gonna disable ABS at the rear and traction control as well. So it's a pretty fun and intuitive motorcycle to ride. However, the key among you who know anything about off-road going motorcycles will notice that this thing is a bit hampered by its 41 mil non-adjustable forks, low seat height, and low ground clearance. Let's see if it's the same story with the Desert Sled. Now, as many of you guys know, this is my personal Ducati Scrambler Desert Sled. I adore this motorcycle. And let me tell you a bit of the specifications on why. So this thing costs $11,995 on the showroom floor and features Ducati's lovable 803cc air-cooled two-valve engine. They've been using this thing 
four years in all kinds of different motorcycles and it really shows. It's a tried and true platform and it's pretty awesome. It makes about 75 horsepower and 52 foot pounds of torque. It's 440 pounds ready to ride, which is about 60 pounds lighter than the Triumph. Now, the big thing I wanna point out to you here is the size and stature of this motorcycle. It features 46 millimeter fully adjustable KYB forks up front with rebound and compression and preload. And it's got a mono shock at the rear, which also has full adjustability. Now, that makes this motorcycle jacked up because it's got this big long travel suspension fork on it, which is really different than the Street Scrambler. Unlike the Street Scrambler as well, this thing has a six speed gearbox, which is different than the Triumph's five speed. It's more of a traditional gearbox as you'd be used to on a normal motorcycle. Now, another big thing I wanna point out to you is the ground clearance on this machine. We are working with nine and a half inches of ground clearance. Now that is Yamaha Tenere 700 territory. That is adventure bike territory. This is serious stuff on this machine. And as you can tell right over here, I have definitely taken this thing on its fair share of adventures as by evidenced by my muffler over here. This motorcycle comes from the factory with Pirelli Rally Scorpion STR tires, which is a higher specification tire than the Torrance Metzlers that the Triumph comes equipped with. It's got a 19 inch front end and a 17 inch front end, just like the Triumph as well, so that's pretty good. And the big thing I wanna point out to you here as well is this motorcycle features a 34 inch seat height that is three inches taller than the Triumph, and that makes a big difference for your riding stance, as I show you guys on the ergonomics check on this machine. Up front, the Ducati does not feature any cool analog sweeping tachometers or speedometers or anything like that. It's got an LCD dash right up here, and it features ABS that can be turned off, but no rider modes. Your right wrist is the rider mode on this machine. It's a little bit more pared back. Now that I've given you a feel and a flavor for these two machines, what do you say we get them out on the road and see what they're like to ride? Alrighty guys, first up on the chop and block is my own Ducati Scrambler, Desert Sled. Let's swing a leg over this machine, as I've done so many times. And the first thing you notice on this bike, man, is just what a commanding stance that it has. These wide bars, this tall seat. I love the way this bike fits. It fits like a naked adventure bike or like a supermoto of some sort. And you turn it on over here. You get that lovely, classic, air-cooled Ducati sound. I've got an aero exhaust on mine, so it sounds spicy. Let's go for a ride, shall we? The first thing I noticed about the Desert Sled, or the first thing I always noticed about it, is just how it's so playful. You know, these big wide bars give you such a commanding stance over this bike. And the big thing you want in a bike that's meant to go off-road is its standing ability. And this bike features that. So when you stand up on this bike, you have a really commanding stance over it. The bars are really nice and wide and high, and I feel super comfortable standing on this thing. It feels like it was designed to do it. And in fact, it can do it. Right over here, we'll just crest over this little speed bump, this little curb. This bike can basically tackle anything. I've actually taken this thing on big adventure rides through New Mexico, through Big Bend National Park, through all kinds of places. And it pretty much just does it all with the plomb. I've actually taken it down ice, mud, gravel, rocks, all kinds of terrain. And the sled just doesn't really care, man. It just tackles stuff with ease. But what is it like when you actually get it out on the road? Let's find out, shall we? Another thing I really enjoy about the desert sled is it does loves doing wheelies. It's always been my favorite thing about this bike. It's just extremely playful. It's crazy how Ducati kind of built a secret supermoto and it really shows. I've always really, really enjoyed these engines. I remember back in 2015, I tested out a Ducati Scrambler Icon and this engine is just so lovable. It's got such good low end grunt and mid range grunt. Um, not a whole lot in the name of top end, but it does feel really, really good. So this two valve Ducati engine here really fits the bill for being a, you know, authentic classic kind of engine. It feels every bit like a classic engine, but what I really love about this sled 
is it's mated to this bike that feels decidedly modern. These big front forks at the front just feels like you can soak up anything with them. I love the fueling and the throttle response on this motorcycle. You know, it's got this off-road mode that kind of lightens up the throttle a little bit so that when you're trundling through and first gear in places, it uh, allows you to have a more muted throttle response, which is quite nice. You know, if you're tackling really tricky conditions, you don't want the throttle response of such a large displacement engine off-road. You know, the front brake feels really, really good. I like this hydraulic clutch over here that it has I mean this bike is just there's a reason I, I chose it as my personal motorcycle I, I love a whole lot of stuff about it and to me it is the classic nature and feel of a scrambler it's supposed to be this kind of heavier oversized large displacement engine that was kind of modified and wrangled to, to do some off-road stuff now you know the astute among you might say well a dual sport is kind of the you know scrambler of today because we've figured out how to build better and better better motorcycles but I think that this is truly the actual scrambler this thing isn't too heavy I think modern adventure bikes except for the middleweight category you know they're all like 540 550 pounds you, you really don't want to wrestle something that big off-road and for me and the type of stuff that I've tackled with this thing it's done phenomenally well I really enjoy the kind of jacked up nature that this bike has it feels like when you drive a, a lifted Jeep around town or something you're just like potholes who gives a crap? I'll, I'll tackle any pothole at any speed. I don't really care. So to me, you know, a lot of people say that scramblers are bad street bikes, bad dirt bikes, they're just bad bikes. But these subtle changes made to the Desert Sled model have elevated the street bike experience, in my opinion. You're getting really top-end components at the front end. I love the way this thing falls into corners. And... It can just handle bumps like nobody's business and it makes an awesome sound so for me the the desert sled is a, a nine and a half a ten out of ten kind of motorcycle and there's a big reason why i picked it as my personal bike it just fit the bill for what i wanted to do with motorcycling and it's just a really really special bike it makes a absolutely cheeky sound too let's take a listen here i'll rev it through the gears a little bit of a v-twin man what a sound quick brake check here front brake feels awesome it's a really similar setup as it is on the triumph and the front brake feels really good. Now, one thing I'll give it to the Triumph is it has a way better gearbox than something like this Ducati. I don't know what is up with this thing's gearbox. It's always done this since I bought it, and I hoped it would get better with time, and it really hasn't. Neutral is basically impossible to find on this thing. You have to do what I call the little Ducati dance to get it into neutral. You have to slightly pull out the clutch, rev it a little bit, and it slips into neutral. But if you don't know how to do that on this bike, you're just going to be stuck in neutral the whole time. Uh, excuse me, you'll be stuck in first gear the whole time. It's kind of annoying. Getting the Ducati on the highway here, and I've never had an issue with it being on the highway, you know? You'd imagine a bike that has no fairings, no windscreen like this would be kind of tough to, to manage on the highway, you know, all that wind blasting. It can get annoying. I actually rode this thing about 10 hours in one day back from uh, the mountains of Galeana, Mexico, back here to Austin, Texas. And uh, it was pretty annoying to have, you know, all that wind blast for such a prolonged period of time. But, you know, it's still a really normal street bike, all things considered. I don't feel like the off-road uh, concessions that have been made for this machine have hampered its on-street performance in any way. In fact, I think a lot of it has improved the on-street performance without you know getting into sport bike territory because this thing's obviously not a sport bike but you know with these pirelli rally scorpions that i feel like is a really good tire i've yet to meet somebody on a twisty road that i can't just keep up with just fine um now, granted i am a cmra racer so uh that does put me at a bit of an advantage but you can really hustle this bike around it, it's no problem at all one thing i really enjoy is the foot placement on this machine feels like a naked bike you know like right here below my leg you know my feet are pretty much just under my butt a little bit they're not forward at all but they're not too far back 
Um, this thing has a really nice and solid stance when it comes to uh, the foot position. Firstly, for me, I feel like the ergonomics package on this desert sled is spot on. Uh, it's exactly what you would want in a motorcycle that's designed for 70% road use, 30% off-road use. And the most fun part about scramblers, in my opinion, are when you get them on a big, long, flowy, gravelly sort of trail, uh, they really come into their own, man. They, they just slide the rear around all over the place. They're a ton of fun to, you know, pick up a big roost and have fun. You know, these bikes are basically the king of off-road power slides. They are so much fun to ride when it comes to that. And when it comes to bopping around town, they are also still so deeply rewarding. You're not gonna get tired of riding this thing. You're not gonna get, you know, your back all into, out of shape on it or whatever. It just feels like a, a standard good motorcycle and they look awesome. This one has the LED up front, the big ring light on it that the Triumph doesn't have. And I think it just kind of elevates its character a little bit more. <laughs> I adore this bike. I love this bike and that's a big reason why I chose it. Uh, and, in, and in my opinion, the Triumph doesn't really hold a candle to it, but I want to be fair. I want to be fair to the Triumph and uh, talk about it in earnest. But you know, for me, if you are considering doing any off-roading with your scrambler, you got to get the desert sled. Um, it, it is the off-roading scrambler to get, absolutely. It's just such a playful bike, man. All it wants to do is just slide the rear around, carve up corners, do wheelies. I love this thing. This bike's so fun. And this big, rowdy 803cc air-cooled engine, yeah, it doesn't make crazy top-end power, but who the hell needs top-end power, man? You're not at a racetrack, you're just bopping around on city streets and, you know, a couple twisty B-roads. What do you need 200 horsepower for? You don't! And then when you stand up, it just feels so natural. Ah, I love this bike. You guys know that. Another favorite feature of mine on the sled, of course, is switchable ABS. You can disable ABS on the fly, as I will demonstrate to you. You press the button here, it tells you to wait, and then ABS is off. So now you can do cool rear wheel slides and all kind of the stuff you want to do with this machine. You know, you might think that since the Triumph has about 100 extra cc's of displacement on the desert sled, that, you know, the Triumph's going to feel faster and more torquey, but honestly, it really doesn't. And I think that's due to the fact that the Desert Sled weighs about 60 pounds less. That is no joke. That's a lot of weight that you're saving when it comes to this motorcycle. So I think the Desert Sled embodies the scrambler spirit um, of a fun motorcycle. You can bop around off-road and do a lot of fun stuff with. I'll get a little rear wheel slide here. <laughs> It's just a blast. Dude, this thing's great. But yeah, this bike really embodies the spirit of what a scrambler is meant to be. And, you know, they've accidentally built a, a secret little supermoto with it. It's, it's a really fun bike to ride and it's a really playful machine. But with all that being said, let's check out what the Triumph Street Scrambler has to offer after, of course, we rip another wheelie. <laughs> God damn, this bike is fun. All right, guys, jumping aboard the Triumph Street Scrambler here. What a handsome looking little motorcycle this is. So as we swing a leg over it, the first thing you notice over something like the Desert Sled is seat height. I mean, I'm, I've got a full on bend in my knees right now. This is a 31.1 inch seat height. This thing's pretty low, pretty amenable for even first time riders. This is uh, a pretty small sitting motorcycle. Stance right here is nice and wide though. I like that. Flip the key right here. Triumph build quality already being showing itself apparent right now. Levers feel good. Controls feel good. Let's turn it on. Ooh, so this motorcycle features a stock exhaust right now, but it's got this cool standard high pipe on it. Still sounds nice and beefy. Now as we take off here with it, since I spent a lot of time with this motorcycle already, a bit of seat time with it, 
I love how easy it is to ride. Scramblers all kind of have this in common. You know, their seating positions, their bars, they're all very easy to ride and very easy to understand, you know? And, and I like that. I'm not a position nowadays where I want to spend a lot of time on the street on a motorcycle that's not easy to ride. I just want something easy, comfortable, and chill to ride. And scramblers fit the bill. Now, as you saw in our Desert Sled <laughs> first impression ride, if you can even call it that, because I've owned that bike for uh, almost a year and a half now, um, I took it over there on that little curb and in that grassy section but I can tell you right now this motorcycle with its five and a half inches of ground clearance I am not going to attempt that right there lest I get stuck so you do have to be a little bit more cautious of what you tackle with the street scrambler it is not as flexible of a motorcycle as something like the desert sled now standing up on this machine it's a little awkward um, I'm not gonna lie the pipes over here on my right foot they kind of stick out a little bit so I can't put my feet really close to the body of the motorcycle that I'd like to as you're supposed to do when you're riding in a standing position like this. The bars are a little bit low and overall this feels a little awkward. This doesn't feel as natural as it would on the desert sled or an adventure bike or something like that but definitely doable. I'm still standing on this machine still getting into it a little bit. As we mentioned the desert sled is a, a bit of a party animal. Does this thing like to lift the front wheel as much? <laughs> well, as you can see, traction control will limit your ability to wheelie with that. So in order for you to wheelie this machine, you do have to put it into off-road mode to turn off the traction control. So we'll do that right here. I'm going to mode, off-road mode, and select it. I literally forget to do that every time I ride this bike. So that is a bit of a bummer. It's not as much of a party animal as a sled that'll just let you wheelie in whatever mode you're in. I mean, it's definitely willing to get the front wheel up, but it, it doesn't feel natural. It doesn't feel, you know, super easy and wanting to do it. But slow speed, standing, wheelies, all that kind of good stuff. That's one thing. But what does this bike feel like to get out on the road? And another thing I wanted to point out too is uh, whenever you put it in off-road mode, you do get ABS off at the rear so you can do some super sweet skiddies. <laughs> See here on this bump. It's still a playful bike. It feels a little wrong doing it, but maybe that is the true scrambler nature. Who can say? Let's get it on the road and let's find out. Now cruising down the street here, one standout feature of this motorcycle is this engine. Wow, what a lovely power plant. Um, this 900cc, 270 degree parallel twin, uh, it's got this lovely velvety kind of quality to it. It's difficult to explain, but if you rode one, you'd see how it just kind of burbles at the low end, just really kind of groans and roars in this way that's very unique. Uh, before I rode this thing, I thought it was going to be really similar to the uh, Yamaha cross-plane parallel twin, the one found in the MT-07 and XSR 700 motorcycle, but uh, really it's quite different, you know? It kind of has this really nice barky quality to it, and uh, as Airy Henning is quick to point out, uh, one thing Triumph does really, really well is the build quality and the lack of driveline lash that occurs on this machine. Everything's built really tight and so it just feels so good getting on the power. It feels so tight putting out that power to the rear wheel. It feels great man. And it's a thoroughly modern engine too which is great to see on a scrambler. This thing's liquid cooled, got rider modes, technology, it doesn't ride too hot. It feels really good doing this thing. But you know with this seating position and this overall vibe and the lower seat this is way less of a party animal than the desert sled. This motorcycle is very clearly telling me that it wants to cruise, it wants to look good, and if you really have to, it can tackle some off-road and some gravel and that kind of stuff, you know? But beyond that, it's just a very stylish, urban cruising kind of motorcycle. The foot pegs are a little bit more forward than on the Ducati Scrambler. This thing feels like it's just sitting a little bit more in a chair position rather than a upright attack position like on the sled. So this is a really laid back motorcycle. Um, maybe, you know, you see the Street Scrambler moniker and you might think that it's going to be uh, a hooligan kind of bike, but no, it's pretty laid back, man. This thing's pretty laid back, pretty chill, and uh, I don't really feel the 
inclination to pop wheelies everywhere with it and slide the rear wheel and jump over curbs and do a bunch of the other dumb stuff that I do on my desert sled. But it overall extremely rewarding motorcycling experience. One thing that I really like on this bike is the transmission. Uh, Triumph does such a good job with their transmissions. Um, I'm a big fan of the one on the Street Triple, big fan of the one on my race bike, my 675R, and this Bonneville is no different. It just snicks into gear, never misses a gear, you can fly in neutral perfectly, it's extremely tactile and rewarding. But the difference is, since this is a bit of a heritage model, you know, it's got a five-speed gearbox, which if you're used to riding motorcycles with six speeds, it can feel kind of weird. And fifth gear on this machine is basically a massive overdrive gear. It doesn't even really, you know, feel like a five-gear uh, motorcycle because fifth gear is such a long overdrive gear you basically get everything done that you need to get done with the four gears honestly it's not too difficult to just ride this thing with four gears around town which adds to that kind of classic vibe that it has but i i do like a modern six speed box I, I think this thing would do well if it had a more appropriate street oriented six speed gearbox now the other huge difference on this thing over the sled is the suspension uh, this motorcycle although it costs eleven thousand dollars it does feature a 41 mil non-adjustable front end and preload adjustable dual shocks at the rear now it's not a bad setup by any means at all see over here i flick it into this little u-turn over here it's extremely rewarding stable playful uh, i don't have any gripes with the suspension as is right now it feels really really good but it does suck that at an eleven thousand dollar price point i can't adjust the suspension to my liking at all specifically for a motorcycle that's designed to go off-road if you guys are familiar with any type of off-road riding you know that dialing in a motorcycle to your specific preferences is super important getting the ergonomics right getting the suspension right getting spring rates for your weight all that kind of good stuff makes a huge difference when it comes to scrambling over big rocks or running down a single track or something like that now god bless anybody who actually takes this machine out to a single track you are my hero i would not have the balls or the required testicular fortitude to do such a thing. I, I would not be caught dead taking this beautiful machine on a single track. However, a light gravel trail, you know, a uh, easygoing, mellow, flowy trail, uh, you could definitely catch me on there, you know? Honestly, the Street Scrambler feels really at home in little traffic situations like this. Feels really good to ride this thing around. I like bopping through city streets with it. It feels like it's most at home doing this sort of thing, which I really appreciate. Uh, I think it's easy to make a, a very laser focused motorcycle, but scramblers, like I said, they don't fit one particular mold. And they have to do a lot of different things pretty well. And Triumph has definitely leaned this, as the name implies, for the street. You know, you can think of this as a very handsome Bonneville that has a little bit of off-road flavor to it. One thing I will say, much like the sled, even though the suspension is non-adjustable, it's 41 mil, it's not super beefy or anything like that, it, uh, it doesn't really feel like it puts itself out of sorts when you slap it onto a pothole or a weird rivet in the road. It feels good. It feels like it soaks up the bumps really, really well. It feels like a competent machine. The standout feature on this bike is just this engine. This, this 900cc parallel twin is rad. It feels really good. I just wish it was mated to a more sporty gearbox and maybe it was a little bit higher state of tune. That would be pretty awesome. Now, if you guys saw my first impression ride on this bike, you'd know that I did take it on a scrambly bit of road and you know, it did okay. Honestly, it did way better than I thought it would. I thought it was gonna be a complete disaster when it came to the, you know, kind of rougher roads and rocky kind of scrambly bits we have here in Austin, but it really did perfectly fine. Again, with a 500 pound motorcycle and not a whole lot of ground clearance and not a disposable suspension, I really wouldn't want to take this thing down anything more serious than a gravel road a very manicured forest road. Um, I'm thinking back to some of the trails I did in New Mexico a few weeks ago with my desert sled, and this thing would have been absolutely lost out there on some of those trails. Would not have had a good time on this thing. But, you know, it's a very handsome motorcycle. It's a very rewarding bike to ride, and Unlike the Desert Sled, I think this is a very beginner appropriate motorcycle for the more mature rider, for someone who wants a cruiser kind of a bike. This thing fits the bill 
really, really well. So with all that being said, let's get this motorcycle back to the shop. Let's take some of our Discord member questions because I put up a quick little poll on there and asked him to ask me questions about the sled and the street scrambler. And let's wrap this up today. Alrighty guys, so coming back in the shop with these two machines, I got a bunch of questions on Discord that I'm gonna answer now. So let's get into it. Kurana asks, which bike is close to being a true scrambler? It depends on your definition. I do think that the Triumph Street Scrambler is pretty authentic with its five-speed gearbox, its dual shocks at the rear, non-adjustable suspension. But in my view, for what a Scrambler is meant to do, which is an on-slash off-road machine that kind of has classic feel and vibes to it, the sled's probably closer to a modern Scrambler, but they're both Scramblers. Uh, Alejandro asks, would you use either of these as a daily commuter? I would happily use both as a daily commuter. And he asks, would this bike help me get a girlfriend? I do think that the Street Scrambler could potentially help you get a girlfriend. I think girls are attracted to motorcycles like this way more than they are your fancy R1s and your sport bikes and all of that. Germany 2 boy asks, how do these bikes compare to similar bikes like the Ninja 400 or the R3? I'm assuming that's a shit post because they are nothing in common with the R3 or the Ninja 400. Gray asks, what would it be like to have this bike as a daily? The Street Scrambler would make an awesome daily rider. It is super comfortable, really easy and intuitive to ride. The big wide bars give you great leverage over the machine and you can pretty much hustle it around any terrain you want. It would be an awesome daily ride. Angel Crisis asks, which would you take off of one bike and auto the other to make a better bike? I guess off of the other. So that's something I'm gonna get into at the end here and I'll talk about that. So I'll answer that question towards the end. A Riley asks, should Nicholas ditch his Z650 and get the Triumph and why yes? He should because then he could finally get a girlfriend. I'm sorry, Nick, I had to do it to you. Lemon asks, between the sled and the scrambler, which one requires less maintenance? Which one is better for someone that likes doing serious wrenching? Um, both of them have a very high level of aftermarket support, and so both of them would be pretty good for wrenching. However, I do think that the Triumph Street Scrambler, given that it's a more traditional engine than the Desmodermic valves over here on the Ducati, would probably require less maintenance in my opinion. Go for Joe asks, does the bike motivate you to do more, go further, go off-road, tackle weather, and so forth, or is it a purpose-built machine? And if it is purpose-built, what is that purpose? So as we mentioned in the beginning, scramblers are kind of do-anything motorcycles, so I don't think this bike has has one purpose. Whoever buys a Bonneville or a Scrambler style motorcycle will likely modify it to fit what they would like to do. As I've done with my desert sled, this bike spends about 60% on-road and 40% off-road. So I've done a couple things to it to make it a little bit more off-road focus. But you could just as easily take the street Scrambler and make it more street focused if that's what you wanted to do. Weasel asks, do the Desmodromic valves take away or add to the Scrambler classic feel, or do you still get that feeling with standard valves on the street Scrambler? Both these engines are very classic feeling, but in different ways. Because the Ducati is air-cooled, it's two-valve, it's a very simple engine, it has that kind of flavor to it. But the Triumph over here, they've made it in a way that has that kind of classic feel and character. So I don't think the Desmo valves take anything away from the experience over here. And I don't think that the modern engine in the Scrambler takes away from it anyways either. Alejandro has another question. He says, how do you deal with the female clout while riding the Biscotti Scrambler? I just do me, man. That's how I do Deal with it. AF Merce asks, which Scrambler is the easiest one to own and maintain cost-wise? I gotta give it to the Triumph over here. You're not gonna have Desmo services on this. Aftermarket parts are not gonna be as expensive as something like the Ducati. There is definitely a real and serious Ducati tax when it comes to this machine. Idia says, even though you can scramble any bike if you try hard enough, which of the two is better prepared for off-roading? And if stock isn't enough, what would you need to be done to improve the off-road experience on the bike or bikes? Hands down, the Desert Sled is way more off-road capable than the Street Scrambler. You can see by its ground clearance, its long travel suspension, its beefy, fully adjustable suspension, the frame is reinforced. I've taken this thing off-road in several different conditions and environments and different countries even, and it can seriously do anything you tackle at it. This machine is definitely definitely intended for light off-roading. Gravel roads, manicured forest roads, that sort of thing. You can definitely hustle the street scrambler around, but if the going gets any more rough than that, this thing's seriously gonna get all out of shape with it. So for this machine, I would recommend selling it and getting a Triumph Scrambler XE. That would probably get you way further than anything you could do to it. But a simple modification you could do to this would be some better foot pegs, maybe a wider and taller bar, so you can get better leverage over the machine when you're standing on it. But the Desert Sled already comes with that stock, so kind of hard to beat. 
Scotty and Espresso asks, which one vibrates more at low and high end speeds? Cruise control on either. Neither of these bikes feature cruise control. And I do think that the sled definitely vibrates a little bit more at low speeds. This bike is buttery smooth in pretty much all speeds. Neither one of them vibrate at high speeds, which is quite nice, but this one vibes a little bit more at low revs. A Riley says, you have said before that you still prefer your desert sled. That is true. So who would you recommend the Triumph to? The Triumph I would recommend to someone who wants a little bit of off-road character and flavor to it. Someone that wants a bike that's gonna be a lot cheaper and easier to run, much more modern, but this has a playful kind of character to it. If you're not super interested in going off-road pretty much at all, I definitely recommend the Street Scrambler. This motorcycle with its taller seat, bigger, beefier stance, it's going to elicit you to wanna to go to off-road. You want to do fun things with the sled. It's a very different riding experience over the street scrambler. Bloater asks, do you feel that air-cooled or water-cooled is the superior choice for a scrambler? That's a really tough one to answer. Uh, a liquid-cooled engine obviously is more modern, more capable, more robust. I would definitely recommend a liquid-cooled engine versus pretty much any air-cooled engine. But the air-cooled engine in the Ducati has never let me down, so I can't really say any bad things about it. And it's a little bit more simple when it comes to that. But if I had it my way, I definitely want a liquid-cooled scrambler. Rollnor asks, I've got a friend who's debating between the street scrambler and the Indian Scout Bob Black. Weird choice. He's a first time rider. Which one do you think would be best for him? I definitely think the Street Scrambler would be a better first time bike for someone who wants to step into that category. The Scout Bobber, from what I understand, from what Spite told me, is a pretty fast motorcycle and probably not beginner appropriate, whereas this thing can definitely be managed by a beginner. Knight Honda asks, which one makes a superior, excuse me, which one makes an easier supermoto? Have you used the something in the city? I assume this in the city. I've ridden this bike in the city. It works great. And obviously this makes a better supermoto. Germany Two Boy asks, which of the bikes feels more modern? This bike hands down feels more modern. Uh, this bike actually feels kind of old school in a lot of ways. A Riley asks, is the difference largely subjective? No, it is not. Uh, I highly recommend that you try both of these machines out if you're interested in them. Sitting on them, you will definitely notice that there is not just a subjective difference uh, between these two models. And again, we're comparing them because they're close in price and close in displacement. The regular Icon's way cheaper than the Street Scrambler, and the Scrambler X and XE models are way more expensive and have a bigger engine than the Desert Sled, so that's where comparing these two models. If you're able to sit on both of them, you will definitely notice the difference immediately. Uh, Jada Calamari asks, which one would you feel more comfortable binning into a ditch and subsequently picking up to ride away? All bikes get dropped, some gets picked up less for others, blah, blah, blah. Thanks. Uh, I think I would definitely feel more comfortable binning the Ducati because I have before. I think the Triumph is a prettier machine than the Ducati, to be honest, to be perfectly frank. I think this is a very pretty and well-adorned bike and I'd feel pretty bad about binning this one. This bike, it's, it's tough as nails, honestly. I've probably dropped this thing no less than 30 times uh, on-road and off-road. Actually, never on-road, only off-road. And it can take a beating, it really can. King Windrix, which one smells better? The Triumph, sure. Sadifornia CBR says, which one would you rather flat track? The sled, no doubt. This would make an awesome flat track bike, honestly. Bella the Kid asks, I was gonna ask which felt more comfortable, but there's like 50 variations of that question, LOL. Yeah, it's true. Romo says, seems pretty clear that the sled is better off-road. It's true, but would you say that the street scrambler makes up for that on-road? I don't think so. I think the concessions made for the off-road environment on the desert sled make this an awesome motorcycle on-road. You can smash into potholes, jump over curbs, do whatever you want. This thing is just all about it. This is more cruising, kind of easy going motorcycle. He also asks, which bike do you think makes a better all around slash daily rider commuter? It depends on if your inseam can support it, but I would recommend this as an all around daily kind of bike. It's my all around daily kind of bike, so of course I recommend it, but this is by no means a bad motorcycle to use all around. Tube again, which one smells best? It's the Triumph, Triumph smells best. Gray asks, also if you can steal an R19 from someone in Austin to add to the comparison, that'd be great. I was not able to. And then Erica says, which one tastes best? Lick them. She is our pet pet dealer. Let me see here. Okay. This one tastes like biscottis and this one tastes like blood pudding. So I think I got to give it to the uh, sled over here. Thanks to everyone who submitted questions. My final thoughts on this for today. None of these bikes are perfect. No scrambler is a perfect machine, but that's what makes them awesome in my opinion. They are very fun, very intuitive and easy motorcycles to understand. They look super cool, but none of them are perfect. And if you're considering a scrambler model, definitely go and sit and try out a lot of different ones because they're not all the same. They've segmented this 
market a whole lot. You definitely need to sit atop different ones to see which one you would like. Personally, for me, in my dream world, my dream scrambler has this engine that's hopped up a little bit. It looks like this. It weighs about 50 pounds less and it has a 21 inch front end. So maybe I want a Tenere 700 that isn't ugly. I don't know, who can say? Thanks for watching today's video. Catch you on the next one. So I hate to break it to you, but this video is actually over. But if you hit this one right over here, you can keep watching your sweet Papa Yam doing some fun stuff. And if for nothing else, do it for Yammy Chan. Don't worry, I'll wait. I'll just, I'll just wait, it's okay, take your time.